Hi everyone, I'm so excited for today's video. I'll be talking about old farmhouses and you'll have to excuse the lighting in here. I know half of me is in the sun and probably looks kind of weird, but I wanted to take advantage of the good lighting out here and plus it feels really good to sit in the sun. It's just a bit chilly in Ohio this morning. And in case you don't want to hear me ramble because I'm going to be doing a bit of that here in the beginning, go ahead and fast forward to this time. That's where I start you know, working in our house. Uh, but I wanted to give you a brief overview of why I have a fascination with the farmhouse style. And no, I'm not referring to the modern farmhouse decorations that you see. I'm talking about the actual old traditional farmhouses. As many of you know, I grew up Amish. So of course I had a lot of cousins and both of my grandparents, you know, lived on farms. So I spent a lot of time on farms, even though we didn't live on one ourselves which I always would have wanted to. I was even a bit envious of my cousins that they get to live on farms with all the animals and the land and the pretty houses. And here we just had a property, but I believe they felt the same way about us. So I guess it's one of those things where whatever you don't have, you kind of want. So these farms were the actual old fashioned farms where they milk cows by hand and they didn't have electricity. They worked their fields with horses. But I remember as a little girl already being fascinated with some of the things I saw in the farmhouses. And believe me, most of these things weren't there for pretty, like they were actually a convenience or a thing they, you know, needed to have. But, you know, nowadays, of course, if we incorporate them into our houses, it's probably more for the look than actual convenience. But that's what I plan to do in today's video is to add some of that farmhouse charm that I remember growing up, you know, into our house. And I realize our house isn't a farmhouse, but I think it's, you know, cottagey enough that I can incorporate it into our house and it's going to look okay. And if nothing else, I just want to walk into a room and kind of notice these things and it just takes me back in time like I'm a really nostalgic person. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm doing this and the things that I'll be doing in this video aren't anything you know difficult or fancy or expensive um, just simple things that you could do yourself you know if you enjoy that style and just want to incorporate something like that into your house I already know I probably won't be able to squeeze everything into one video like all the ideas I have of you know farmhouse things you could add to your house so I'll probably be doing some future videos on this also but let's start out with this one and hopefully I can give you guys some ideas and feel free to share anything that you remember growing up, you know, maybe living in a farmhouse or just having relatives that lived in one. Um, if you remember anything special that you always noticed, feel free to share it in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear uh, what you guys noticed. Uh, so let's get right into it. I'll probably do voiceovers as we go, kind of explaining, you know, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Here I'm measuring the wall and I plan to add some hook boards Every farmhouse had a lot of these. Like I remember entire hallways would be lined with boards, you know, with hooks on them. Basically just simple, plain boards, you know, with the hooks. Um, I remember a couple different styles of hooks. They weren't always the same. But I think the reason, you know, everybody had these was, you know, the families were large and they probably needed space to hang things. And often in the Amish farmhouses, you'd come in a back door or a side entrance and it wouldn't be a mud room, but kind of like that, maybe a little hallway with a, you know, a basin to wash hands. And then again, the walls would be lined with hook boards. And often, you know, that's where we hung our coats or, uh, you know, bags or whatever, you know, we came with. The wood I'm using here is just some we had in the shop. I found a piece that looked to me like a hook board.
ended up finding some really nice hooks on Amazon and I'll try to link that down below in the description box. But I thought these look really old and authentic. The next thing I'm working with here is drop cloth. This is one of my favorite fabrics. I usually buy it at Walmart. I pre-wash it. It gets nice and soft. I just love the feel of it and the color. But I plan to add little curtains where my sink doors are, like the cabinet doors by the sink. And I have memories of this, like people used to use you know, fabric instead of wooden doors. So I have my rod here and I wanna to check to see how wide my seam needs to be or my pocket for the rod. That looks about right. And I'll probably just use a sewing gauge, like a measuring gauge, and kind of measure as I go. I don't think I'll pin everything in place. I'm not sure how long this is gonna last. Like, is it gonna be really inconvenient to you know, access the space? Probably more so than a door, if I'm honest, but I'm gonna try it. I'm just going for the look again, and I'll keep my doors. I can always put them back on, you know, if I don't like this, uh, but I just love the look of that. So these curtains are really simple. Basically, I just measured my space and made them twice as wide. That's often a good rule to go by if you want your curtains to be gathered. Um, just make them you know twice as wide as your space and in this case i want two curtains because i want it to be split in the middle you know for easier access so i'm just basically hemming all of the edges and again for curtains i like my bottom hem to be wider than the top like the top is for the rod pocket but i like a good three inch hem to be on the bottom of any curtain and as i'm making these i'm thinking this would be a nice addition to the etsy shop so if you want curtains like this and you don't want to take the time to make your own or maybe you don't have a sewing machine we are going to stock these on the etsy shop and i feel like sink spaces like this would probably all be about the same so i'm pretty sure the size would probably fit for most although we could always adjust you know accordingly just let us know but uh, yeah, again, we'll have these available on the Etsy shop and this beautiful drop cloth fabric. I have a few antique pieces I want to add to our home, smaller pieces that will remind me of the past. And there's an antique store, I guess you could call it that, in the Baltic Ragersville area, in case you're local. I'm an Amish family owns it. Uh, my cousin Susie and I like to go there now and then. Uh, they have the top story of their barn filled with antiques. It's a really neat place. Um, it's like a mini farm with all kinds of different animals. And I think they have pretty good prices on their antiques. And of course, I always somehow manage to find a kitty to pet at some of these places. So cute. I ended up finding an old door that I really like, and I'll probably show that in a future video. I uh, found some smaller items, like a pretty canister set that reminded me of something my grandma used to have, and then an old scale and an antique oil lamp.
I surprised myself with the lamp purchase since I actually used to have to use one of these lamps in the past for a light in my room. I always tell the boys, just think, you know, I used to read by the light of a kerosene lamp. And that's usually when they ask if I also encountered dinosaurs, which is actually kind of funny. But, you know, things have changed with the Amish. Like they, um, I'd say most of them, I mean, there are still some that would have kerosene lamps, but most of them would have, you know, switched to using a generator to produce their electricity for their lights or maybe a solar panel. And some even have electric in their homes. So things definitely have changed. And, you know, that's some of these things are the reason I'll never take for granted, you know, walking into a room and just flipping a switch to get your light. Uh, you know, that with many other things are uh, just, yeah, pretty awesome to have, you know, things that we, most people probably, you know, take for granted. Uh, but there is something peaceful and cozy about an oil lamp burning, I think. I don't know, do you guys remember seeing beautiful shelf liners and cupboards and cabinets years ago? I have memories of that. Uh, I know grandma used to have the prettiest little floral lined shelves and I decided I'm gonna do that for my open shelving here in the kitchen. Uh, managed to find some vintage looking wallpaper or contact paper off of Amazon again. So here I'm putting that in. And I also plan to add some lace trim along the edges. I know, I never thought I'd do that because I remember, again, years ago, people always did that. And sometimes it would look almost maybe too frilly depending on where it's at. But I'm going to try it here. I thought, you know, the color is white. And of course, my cabinets are white too. I think it'll just go kind of blend in nicely together. managed to find this lace off of eBay. I think Amazon has it too, but the shipping time was too long for me. I needed it sooner, but I'll try to have a link down below in the description box of this exact same lace. And this is more of a plastic self-adhesive lace. And I'm really impressed with how easy it is to, you know, put up. And I think it kind of feels like it's a good quality, but I'm really liking how this is looking. I've been wanting to add a screen door to our kitchen door. I'm of course often found in the kitchen, you know, working, and I love to have the door open even without a screen in there, you know, letting the outside in. And with having that screen door there, I'd of course still be doing that, but I wouldn't be letting all the bugs and yes, even the raccoons inside. Okay, you guys are gonna have a fit, but I did leave the front door open and we have one around here that is so bold. He's almost like, I don't know, a pet or something, but I can't have a raccoon in my house. So I think it'd be a good idea to add one. I of course love to see them and hear them, have many memories of that. Like I think everybody had screen doors back in the day. Uh, we had them growing up and I plan to use an actual spring for the opening and closing, just hearing that slam of the screen door. I even like that sound actually. And I thought about trying to find one in some local antique malls because I know I've seen them before, but of course when I set out to look for one, I 
could not find one. Um, did spot one, but it was really pricey. Uh, it was beautiful though, but I uh, ended up finding a few other items, including these teacups. I often collect these if I see pretty teacups, uh, fill them with candle wax and sell them on the Etsy shop. I thought these were really pretty. So I decided since I couldn't find a screen door, I'd go ahead and make one. Um, I measure my opening. I'm gonna make one to fit into the opening. Of course, keeping everything just a little bit smaller than the actual opening. That way it won't you know, fit too tightly. And I really have no pattern or anything to go by. Here I'm just cutting boards to the correct size of what I think will look okay. And I do remember years ago, my grandpa made screen doors for our house and I'm kind of going by how he made those, but I plan to add some special character features uh, just to give it kind of an old antique look. I found these pretty wooden carvings off of Amazon that I plan to add in the corners of the screen door. And I'll have to add another piece of wood here in order to fasten them correctly. Um, here I'm just gluing and pinning that onto the carvings. When I work on a large piece like this, I like to work on the floor. I know it's not the most convenient, especially on your knees, but um, it is a wide open place where I can kind of lay out everything, see how it looks and just measure again. I'll make sure everything looks okay before I start putting things together. I wonder what you guys think about adding this pretty wrought iron piece that I had picked up recently in a thrift store. You probably saw it in a recent video, but I had in mind to use it kind of as a, I think it protects the screen on the bottom part of a screen door and it looks great, I think. Uh, so I'm just laying it on here, just kind of seeing how it's gonna look. I'm not sure at this point, will I actually use it or not? The Craig Jig is one of the most amazing tools in our shop, I think. Um, it's so easy to I just drill these holes in sideways so I can fasten my boards together. And I will try to have a link down below in the description box of this exact Craig Jig, but I really love it. I like how nice and clean these holes look. And I do plan to fill them in. I've never done this before, but I did watch a video on YouTube where someone used wooden dowels to do this. And you can also get the wooden plugs. It's the Craig Jig brand plugs. I don't have any on hand and I think they're a little bit expensive. And I thought, well, since I have dowels on hand anyway, I'll just go that route. Hopefully you can kind of see here in the video how I'm doing it. Uh, the multi-tool, the Milwaukee multi-tool I'm using here is one of the best things in our shop. I know I often say that about various tools, but this is a winner. Uh, you can cut through anything at any angle with this thing. So awesome. I wanted this door to be green, and I'm choosing to go with this color called Lichen Moss. It's such a pretty shade of green. I think it'll look great in the kitchen with all my other green accents.
So I can't really forget about this pretty wrought iron piece. I think it would look great on the door. Here I'm cutting it down to the right size, gonna try to attach it. And I might even just leave it this color. I'm liking this shade of tan with the green along with even a few rust spots. Uh, John thought I should paint it black and I think that would look good too, but I can always do that later if I don't like this and I can never get it back to this color again. So I'm gonna give it a shot, see how it looks. you guys enjoyed this video I sure had a lot of fun working on these projects in fact it just gives me mood to even add some more things uh, things that just you know remind me of the past I love walking into these rooms and seeing these things it just brings back so many memories another memory I have is the spring house that used to be on my grandparents farm I can still smell it I know what it felt like stepping down into the little house and there was of course a spring running into a trough that was in there and we would always get a drink of water out of a little tin cup and it was one of those tin cups with a handle and years ago i ended up getting one for our sink i just like drinking out of a tin cup but small things like that it's amazing how we just don't really forget i'm really getting along with my curtains by the sink you know at first i thought Am I gonna like this not having doors to open? But it's not too bad. I don't access that space a lot either, so I'm sure that probably makes a difference, but I'm just loving the look of it. So, so far it's that has outweighed the convenience of doors, I guess. But if you're wanting some for yourself, you know, a drop cloth fabric makes amazing little curtains. 
And then of course we do have these available in the Etsy shop if you don't wanna make your own. One other thing I wanted to mention is the door by the hook board. I had done that years ago and right now I can't even think had I showed it in a video or was it years ago when I had my blog, but I ended up putting some planks, like thin strips of wood onto that door to give it that planked look. And I added that pretty glass knob with the plate so that is a really, you know, a farmhouse memory for me too. And it was really easy to do. You could totally do that too if you want to add some farmhouse charm into your home. So as always, guys, I hope your day is going great. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.